here with head coach Sean Kirikoff, the SK Show production value increase this week. <laughs> yes. Coach, how are we doing today? Very good. Doing good. Uh, well, tell me about this past week. Uh, it, it's been a, a bit of a strange one, sort of a, a bye week, if you want to call it that. Last match was two Saturdays ago. Um, but it, And it seems like a lot of times with any sport, you have that time off, it's focusing on us. And I feel like that's probably what you guys did this past week. We did. Um, and I don't know, I guess maybe this is my fault, but I always feel like we had tons of time when I've had situations like this in the past. And you're like, okay, we can take it slow. We can, we can focus on this, focus on that. And then towards the end of the week, you're like, well, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. And I mean, there's just never enough time. Uh, but I thought we got some good work done. We were able to get very specific in, in some aspects of the game that we felt like we struggled in a little bit um, in the first two weekends. So I do believe that in our practices here recently that we've shown some improvement on that. So I mean, I guess we accomplished what we wanted to. Was that any different, uh, th those things that you focused on coming out of that weekend at Missouri where we had a great you know, sweep of Missouri State, maybe not as good a performance against Abilene uh, and it ended with Missouri, but did anything change in terms of what you wanted to work on coming out of that weekend? Um, I don't know if I follow the question there, Brad. I'm sorry. I mean, it, it, what, what I felt like, and it, it, I'll go in a direction. You tell me if I nailed it. Okay. Um, Abilene Christian, while we didn't expect it to be able to push for a win against that match or in that match, um, and I believe that it really came down to just ball control. And that's something that um, historically during my time here, that's been what our, our major um, part of our game has been. We are going to play really good defense. We're going to be in system because we pass well and serve receive. And so we're always going to have the ability to compete with teams. Um, <clears throat> even if we if we don't match up from a physical standpoint. Um, and then that's not necessarily where or who we are as a team right now. I think we're, we're bigger, more, more physical. Um, so we can match up with a lot of different teams um, at the net, but we got to be able to control the ball and, and put ourselves in position to take advantage of that size and that, that athleticism. Um, that's what I think hurt us the most against Abilene Christian is that they just kept some rallies going long enough to where they got into opportunities to put the ball away and and we didn't do that on our side so that's really what we focused on is, is that what yeah, you were well, okay because I remember us talking about ball control issues mm -hmm. in that first weekend I know you mentioned that was part of the issues somewhat this yeah. past weekend and so that's kind of where I was thinking. okay yeah then then we're on the same Another page I mean and it just it, it's fixable it is my thing. It's like, I don't need us to be exactly what we had been in, in 17 and 18 and 19. It's from a, um, a passer rating standpoint and serve receive or uh, the, the exact digs per set, but we need to start inching closer to that. And I think that's all within our capability. And like I said, in just a, a couple practices last week and then carried over here today, um, I see improvement. So as long as that continues, I think we're going to be in a great position to be able to, to allow us, to, again, to be just big and physical at the net. So after zero matches and solely practice last week, you move into this week, but we have five matches. Yeah. Uh, Midweek, uh, conference opener, actually, on Thursday, and then a tournament down in Southeastern. Uh, what are the challenges of, of so many matches in you know, a short amount of time with turnaround and scouts and all those things? Not the easiest thing. I mean, you definitely can't implement scouts the way you would normally want to. Um, and and that's, that's looking at from a coaching lens. I mean, the girls are, could be like, this is great. You know, I just want to go out there and play. Uh, but from my aspect uh, for, or from my viewpoint, you know, I would love to be able to be pretty detailed about the teams that we're going into. Um, but also, I mean, you think about it, I mean, whenever you have younger groups, it, it's a learning process to be able to absorb that information. So if you throw too much at them, it, it, it could be pointless. Um, so, I mean, that's a big one from, from my viewpoint is not being able to really put a in-depth scout before each of those games. Um, and then it's got to be, I mean, just to compartmentalize just the different segments of the week. I mean, you have a midweek against Jackson State, who was very successful last year and has been a program that keeps improving every single year. Um, when we played them last in 2019, 
that was a great environment. I mean, it was hostile in a good way from the fans. I mean, it was a great atmosphere to play in, and we had to work and earn that match. And that's exactly why I, I really wanted to schedule that again. Same thing we talked about before about Tarleton, is to get this group in those type of environments so when we find it in conference, it's not a shock. Um, so that's going to be great. And then to turn around and to immediately change focus into Southeastern, like this, this matters more than anything. I mean, and there, Southeastern is going to be one of the top teams in the conference. So we're going to find out real quick where we stand um, going into the rest of the year. And then you have two tough matches of rivals right after, you know, one right after another with La Tech, um, who is absolutely looking to beat us. And then Monroe, obviously the immediate turnaround and revenge from us beating them in the, the first weekend of the year. So, I mean, it just, it, they're going to be some battles this week and they're all one right after another and they have different aspects in, in what kind of match those are. And this may be a question for, for next week when we're looking back on, on the week. Uh, once we get into that string of, you know, four matches in three days uh, towards the end of the week, and it can come down to just our players making plays, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whether it be a, a kill here or a block or a dig or whatever, are you, what are you hoping to see when it does come to that where maybe you just kind of – if the scout gets thrown out the window at some point, hopefully it doesn't, but hoping to see players making plays. Yeah, and, and I would say that that would be the, the exact same situation as the first weekend. Um, so no idea how we're going to handle those tough situations. So two five-set matches. Um, and in both cases, we executed when it mattered the most towards the end of the game. Um, now, you look at Monroe, they've been in four, maybe five, five set matches at this point throughout the year. So they're gaining those experiences as they go. And, and eventually, in theory, they should be more comfortable in set five now that they, they keep getting into those situations. Um, so then it's going to matter, okay, once again, who's going to execute when it matters the most? Um, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And just who can, who can have some sense of calmness when things are crazy and they matter the most in set five if we get into extra games that way um, and can execute and, and not give away easy points to allow it to be a little bit easier for the other side. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you.